Hi guys, I posed a quick Q&A on my Insta account, come follow me if you're not already, Science of Hazel, and it was basically a quick Q&A where I said you could ask me anything and now I'm going to answer those questions on YouTube. So first question, is Lyra named after the character from The Golden Compass? If you guys don't know already, and you really should know, Lyra is my beautiful grey cat. She's five years old and she is my baby. I love her so, so much. Now, and then just like magic, she appeared. Hi, baby. Oh, oh, poor, hey, poor. Get your paw out of my neck. So Lyra is indeed named after the main character of the Golden Compass, his dark materials. Uh, Northern Lights if you're British and because Golden Compass I think is the American name of it So before I got a cat I always had it in my head that I wanted my first pet to be called Pantalaimon Which is the demon of Lyra, but when we got our little grey kitten five years ago I just thought that Pan wasn't cute enough for her I think I might still call a pet one day Pan. I think it's weird and cute and I like that sort of thing but this cat was too cute, so I decided to call her Lyra because my friend Frankie was like, well, if you don't like the name Pan, call her Lyra. So we did. We got her off Gumtree, and she's been amazing ever since, even though she does kind of meow at all times of the night. So yeah, that's the first question well and truly answered. Bye-bye. Next question is, what is my go-to shower song? That is such a good question. I'm quite awkward to admit this, but um, Coyote Ugly was a cult classic from my youth, my childhood, and I really liked the Leanne Rhymes song, Can't Fight the Moonlight. It's weird. I don't listen to it very often. I don't actually really listen to music in the shower, but if I decide to put on music, I do tend to put that one on. I don't know why. It's weird. But yeah, I really liked that film when I was a kid probably shouldn't have, really inappropriate, and so that is the song I go to. Shower song is the one you sing yourself, isn't it, rather than what you listen to? Is it? Yeah, you belt it out in the shower because you have good acoustics there. Okay, so apparently shower song is what you're singing, not what you're listening to. I don't sing. Anyone who knows me knows that I can't sing a note in tune, so I would never choose to stand in the shower and sing. So I'm sorry if I haven't answered your question properly, but I don't sing unless really forced to and then even then I will mime so no I don't have a go-to shower song in that case. I've been asked how do you get a grade 9 in edXL triple science? This is a question I get asked time and time again. Number one, keep up with all your schoolwork. That means if you miss a lesson because of music, you're ill, you're on holiday, whatever reason, make sure you keep up, make sure you know what you've missed and if you don't understand it ask your teacher, watch one of my videos, that sort of thing because remember I have lots of topic videos. Now once you've done that it's a matter of making sure that I find that with some of my students that I teach they're not really aware of what they're supposed to know and that's where checklists come in. Make sure you're aware of the whole course, the whole specification because if you miss huge chunks obviously you're not going to get those marks in the exam. So do try to be aware of what it is you need to know, even if you don't necessarily know it all at the same time or right now. And then once you've done that, start consolidating, start revising, watching my all-in-one videos is a great way of doing that. Start learning those perfect answers, which remember I have those revision guides which are full of them, so you really get your exam technique, your exam wording sorted. And at that point you can start doing practice papers which should become your new best friend and really you should try and answer as many of those as possible and together with the mark scheme that will really help direct your answers. Next up, how to make a revision timetable. It's a tricky one, lots of people make them and they find that they don't really stick to them. What I would say is don't punish yourself and don't necessarily feel like you have to stick to a strict revision timetable which is like 10 hours a day, it's ridiculous. Just get all your subjects ordered, then work out some time slots, so maybe you work two sessions in a day, morning and evening, giving you the afternoon off, maybe you'll work the afternoon and evening session, but make sure you take one of the three sessions off a day so that you have something to look forward to, because otherwise you'll just end up sitting there endlessly, looking at the wall, looking at your phone, and that's no good to anyone. Obviously make sure you lock your phone away when you're revising to stop yourself from procrastinating. Someone's asked me what are the best biology guides for AS level. Now, I'm actually in the middle of writing 
A level and IB biology guides so hopefully when they're written I'm going to say that those are the best A level and IB biology guides you know I'm so hot on my exam wording I love my perfect answers so I'm going to put it out there they will be the best revision guides available on the market I just need to finish them Someone's now asked, is the workload at Oxbridge too much? That's a really interesting question. Yes, it's a lot, particularly if you're doing a science degree, an engineering degree. You have huge numbers of contact hours. I used to have lecture, followed by dissection, lecture, practical, and then a supervision, one-on-one -on -one or just with one other person and a professor, and that was super intense. So yeah, there's a massive amount to do. Essays expected every week. Do I regret it? No. It was the best three years of my life without doubt. Yes, I worked hard, but I played hard too. I was a member of the football team. I had loads of friends. We were always out and about going clubbing, having so much fun. So yeah, it was the most intense time of my life. If I could go back in an instant, I would. It was amazing. So yeah, although the workload was huge and super intense, no way would I say I regret it and actually fundamentally it really taught me how to work hard and to make use of my time. I was always prone to procrastinating, kind of wasting time, pretending to revise and then once I went to Cambridge I was like no, I'm not wasting time anymore. If I'm working, I'm working and then if I'm enjoying myself, I'm enjoying myself. I'm not having that horrible kind of no man's land where it's like tumbleweed passing by. You're not really working but you're not having fun. And once I told myself that every minute of the day had to count, whether it was from a work point of view or from a fun point of view, that really changed my life. Now let me know in the comments below if there are any further questions you'd like me to answer, what sorts of videos you'd like to see coming from Science with Hazel. And yeah, as you can see, it's nearly Christmas here, so really excited. Got a very small tree because we have a very small flat, but I'm still in the Christmas mood. But yeah, don't forget to sub if you haven't already and come follow me on Insta because there's a whole plethora of study resources, little tidbits there to help you out.